and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some more Soul Tide Treachery. As you can see over on the left here, we're going to be playing some ranked matches with some fun decks today. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be trying to rank up. Um, I had yesterday I had a, uh, a computer update that kind of messed up some sound settings that I haven't quite figured out um, how to get them back yet. Spent um, close to an hour so far and I, I haven't figured it out yet, but I'll work on it tomorrow. But basically you should be hearing me as far as I know. <laughs> I think the, the microphone's working, but there's no um, arena sounds here for this league. So if you're watching on YouTube, I um, apologize for that. Um, of course, y'all on stream, y'all know that that's not on. There's no music or anything. Um, but anyway, I uh, wanted to play this deck again. It's been a, you know, almost a week since we've played it, and it's my favorite deck to be playing right now. Uh, I've played, been playing some of the last few days off stream with the deck, ranking up a little bit with it. Um, and my plan, hopefully I uh, follow through with this, but, you know, we'll see how, like, my settings and everything, how much time all that takes tomorrow. But my plan it was to uh, record and make a sideboard guide for this deck uh, for the YouTube channel tomorrow. That that was my plan, but we'll see with all this, the set, you know, how much time it takes tomorrow to work through some settings. But um, yeah, because there's been a lot of people that have been asking for a sideboard guide for this deck, so that's why I was planning on doing that. But yeah, this deck's just a lot of fun to play. We get to do so much cool stuff with uh, Neoform and Prime Speaker Vanifar and everything with all these value creatures. And of course, your rock is just a really fun card to play. And then Agent of Treachery is a great late game card. So let's go kind of get to it. Let's play some matches. Let's see how it goes. Um, I think I'm planning, let's play four matches with each deck today instead of five matches with us already starting really late. So that's that's what we're gonna do here, and we'll see how it works. But here we go. Sultai treachery. Yeah, you're 120 packs deep into M20, and you've only pulled six mythics total. Wow, that's really unlucky. Because you're you're supposed to get a mythic every eight packs on average that's the average um hmm. amount that mythics are supposed to show up well this is not a very good mulligan this is a pretty bad start for our deck let's look for land risen reefs not land but is a good card like this is it is it going to help us be any faster but it will help our late game because if i keep this on top we're definitely just playing tap land with hinterland harbor next turn and then the following turn after that probably leave kin druid unless we draw an untapped land underneath risen reef we're just in a pretty rough spot i think we keep it and hope for the best, but we are in a really rough spot. All right, so there. We know their Nexus. We know our hand's garbage. Our deck's not particularly great against Nexus anyway. You know, we are a deck that's trying to um, grind out a late game. And combo decks can go underneath us. All right, hopefully our next two cards are also lands. We get a hit of land here. Nope. <laughs> no, you can't steal their extra turns with Agent. But, you know, we could try to take some of their lands with Agent of Treachery if we can get there. Um, as far as this deck for best of one... I honestly, I think I would change a whole lot to the deck for best of one. I would basically pre-board for aggro. Um, so I, I would basically be putting in a whole lot of the uh, sideboard cards. 
into the main deck in best of one. I don't think that it would work out too well in best of one, though. I think, uh, like, this is a this is the kind of mid-range deck that's reactive and has um, a good sideboard plan against other decks, and this this is not a, a very good and like that those kind of decks are not really where you want to be in best of one. So I basically I wouldn't really recommend this deck for best of one. All right, so my plan right now is just to steal Tamio with Agent of Treachery. As somebody who doesn't know their hand at all right now, I think it's, it feels pretty odd that they're not just minusing and grabbing Wilderness Reclamation and putting that into play. Um, yeah, my, my assumption would be that they have another one. There we go. Okay, so let's see. So if I play Cavalier Thorns, one, two, three, four, five, six, I just have to, I have to hit an untapped land. I guess it has to be an untapped blue land if I play Cavalier Thorns to be able to play Agent of Treachery also. Um, yeah, we'd have to hit an untapped blue land. Can I give them another turn? No, it's, it's pretty unlikely that I get another turn. If I, if I give them a turn, it's pretty unlikely that I get one. Okay, okay. If we draw land, we can play your rock and agent of treachery. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they'd have Veil of Summer in the main deck though. Hey, what's up, Blinks? Thanks for that resub. Second sub of the day. Sorry I missed that. Because there's no sounds. But thank you so much there, Blinks. Drawn from Dreams, okay. So all the, like, you know, it's, it's likely Nexus here. You know, digging another seven cards. So they have 33 left. They just put six at the bottom. Yeah, like, there's not really a way they couldn't find a Nexus with all those cards. If... You know, it's all about trying to get another turn. If we can get another turn, we have a shot. No. Don't think we're getting another turn, though. This is probably it. Well, I guess I'm not even one land away from going your rock agent of treachery. There's one, two, three, four. Like that's four, five, six, seven. I'm actually two lands away from that. That has to be it, right? I mean, one more I'm conceding for sure. Okay. GG.
All right, so negate, ego, trophy. Veil's honestly not bad. We don't need troops. We don't need find. Um, All right, so 63. So as far, like, basically, Neoform, like, Neoform, Mirror Image, Spark Double, Yurok, all, all that kind of stuff is all. The, like, so basically what we're trying to do, our game plan, is to get Agent of Treachery out as soon as possible and then and then start doubling up agent of treacheries and steal their lands keep them from from comboing that way that's that's what uh my plan is so yeah we're gonna take out moldratha and i think maybe a cavalier of thorns i think maybe one of these neoforms hey what's up narinen getting that hype thank you so much All right, I got 20 seconds left. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of a Neoform. There you go. And a Cavalier of Thorns. Okay. Year ago, sub to the best modern channel stream in MTG. Year later, it's the best channel with the best people. Hey, Todd and chat. Old enough to get cake. There you go. 12 months. Thank you so much there, Narnan. Yeah, it looks like you subscribed, Matt. You have the you have the tie badge, so you're good there. If you're on PC, Matt, try to refresh your stream, and maybe a a but, a, a not notification will pop up for you to send. Uh, I need land. Risen Reef kind of helps. I mean, it does help get land, but slowly we have to take a turn off to cast it. Still probably worth it, though. Yeah, you got the, yeah, you got the tie bar now with the one-year sub. I would love to be able to have the negate available for the unmoored ego to be able to protect unmoored ego. Let's see if we can hit some lands. There we go. All right, good start, good start. Draw one more land. We get to ego with negate backup. That would sure be nice. No, my sound settings are messed up. Okay, well, now we don't need negate. All right, drawn from dreams, Mu Yanling. Three blink of an eye, three quench. Two Ether Gust. Two Veil of Summer. Oh, uh, what is a win con in here? I don't see one. So I guess it's the Mu Yanling this is the win con. I could shock and hold up negate, but I'm going to kill Narset instead. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like Mu Yanling was the one win con. 
all we have to do is destroy this moo and the game's over. GG. So now they, they just get to see more of my deck, basically. But they cannot win the game anymore. Besides me milling out. That's, that's their only way to win is me milling out right now. Oh, right. They can, get a, they can put it back in hand with Tamiyo. Never mind. Never mind. That is true. They do get to do that. Um... My bad, my bad. Okay. Next game. So yeah, I didn't want to cast Agent of Treachery there because we knew about the Veil of Summer in hand. Ceratops honestly looks pretty good about from like what they're trying to do. I actually kind of like the Ceratops. They had a bunch of quenches and bounce spells. Do I want to get rid of a Yurok? So Mortal Sun getting bounced is kind of annoying. Slightly annoying. Okay. Oh, yeah, they have a bunch of, yeah, a couple of Aether Gusts also. Slower hand. Ooh. Hand's only not as slow. Suddenly not as slow. Ugh, got quenched. No land drop, huh? Just gonna get a temple down. Good scry, good scry. And set up the cavalier for next turn. Hmm. I guess Cavalier getting countered is not ideal. So I could wait. I could just go Leafkin, Temple, wait another turn. I guess I should do that. Scry another land at the bottom. Oh. That one's a little better than a land. All right, so I don't need to hold up negate here because I'm not going to be casting negate. Basically, I'm going to have I'm going to be ca keeping negate for next turn. Mm, maybe that's just a mistake in thinking. Because, yeah, they tap out for Tamiyo like this. 
didn't need negate for Unward Ego. So I guess I didn't need to attack the one with the elf. So do I get to yeah, five, eight? So yeah, I can Cavalier and Ego, but then I don't have... I may have negate available. No, I guess I just don't. Yeah, no, because I guess I would technically have the mana, but. All right, so they sided out one uh, Nexus. Still have a, just a Mu Yanling for win condition. All right, let's scoop it up. <laughs> Leaked Eldrain card, Nexus of Cake. All right, we're into Diamond now. We are in the sky like diamonds. Yeah, I had hey, that's that's some that's some hard magic right there. Game t game two, cast on Mordigo, win. Game three, cast on Mordigo, win. That was some difficult magic. Yeah, to find those lines. <laughs> Sarkin appreciates the Nexus of Cake. All right, so this hand's pretty good. We gotta get rid of a card though. I don't really want to get rid of a card. I guess it's gonna be Neoform. I guess. I like this hand though. Let's see, maybe I just Temple right? No, 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 no. We don't Temple. My opponent said hello. I need to say hello back, so I'm not rude. There we go. Hello. With the no music playing, I do feel it's it's like I feel more obligated to talk more. So I feel like the next few hours my voice is gonna get kinda sore. I don't know what's going on with that. Nope, no blocks. Please, no removal for my poor Lanamore Elves. Just play your two drop. Pass the turn. Ooh, I love the pass turn. Whoa, the pass turn is a really strong play by the opponent. No, they didn't go for the pass turn. I think they should have gone pass turn. Yeah, I could choop that little 1-1, one, one, but they could go like Spitfire here, and then I don't kill Spitfire because I already chooped, and then I don't draw a land, so I don't get to like play Yurok or Cavalier of Thorns, and then I'm sad. Ugh. That's the worst case scenario, though. So now I feel real bad for not chooping. Yay, best case scenario. Land. So 
So they need six points of burn to kill me with their last two cards. Are you kidding me? Well, great hand opponent. They had it. I don't even know why they're playing that thing. Because I just died of the attack triggers. All right, so it looks like if I would have played Cap or if I would have played Chupacabra, would have had a chance. I didn't play Chupacabra. I died. That was not lucky. I would say. All right, anti aggro package in bringing in all those 10 cards we're cutting find we're cutting immortal sun we're cutting agent of treachery um cutting spark double mirror image quasi duplicate vanifar i don't know vanifar is not bad i mean Two four like being a two four is, is just fine. Like cutting a neoform. Being a being a two four is just fine. Maybe I actually honestly for like what my opponent's playing, I don't think I need the two hostage takers. We're gonna take out one hostage take. We're gonna just play one. Alright, let's go with this. Yeah, lightning bolt and standard. Only for a couple more months. Why did I say a couple more months? I meant the word weeks. Only for a couple more weeks. There we go. Take two was perfect. Well, this could be too slow. On the, I would definitely mulligan this if I was on the draw. We'll give it a try on the play here. Your rock can just be so good. But we're going to need to find some lands. Hey, Caesar. They have so many burn spells all the time. Makes me sad. Uh, if, if I knew my first two draws were going to be six drop, four drop, I, will, I would have mulliganed my hand. But obviously you, do, you don't know what your draws are going to be whenever you keep your hand. So I'd really like an untapped land that doesn't hurt me. Ugh. That's an untapped land that hurts me. I think it's just best to get the troop and play honestly. Keep this Scorch Bitter from attacking for two over and over still. Hopefully they have another land or two in hand. There we go. That's good. That's not the worst because we can choop that. Hopefully the last card in hand is another land. Speaking of lands, I'd like to draw one, get this Yurok in play. Um. Darn. One and one. 
All right, well, I did keep a slow hand, and I knew that this could have happened. Thanks, Subhuman. Hope your day is well as well. But good news, we just, we just ranked up, so the loss doesn't hurt us at all. You know, we're in the same spot. So perfect time for a loss there. The question is, do you think Chandra Tribal is a good investment? Free-to-play player, don't have very many wild cards. I would, I would say, um, I mean, there's, there's a good chance that, it's, that it'll be a pretty good deck still uh, next format. But it's, it's still a little too early to tell. I would, I would basically recommend waiting. You know, if you're, if you're free-to-play, if you're not going to be investing any money into arena after rotation i would definitely and you have some wild cards right now i would definitely wait um until rotation until we start seeing um you know new decks and everything but good job good job jordan yeah i'm glad glad you've been playing it in that event i think it's a i do think it's a really good choice for the event for the the xp event i like it a lot there but as far as next format you know, I'd be lying if I tell you if I tell you really any way to go right now. What's up, Kitty Dexterity? Thanks so much for that tier two resub. You are awesome. Thanks, Kitty Dexterity. That is sub number four of the day. It does seem like there's like there's a lot of good Sultai cards in standard, and it does seem like there's going to continue to be a lot of good Sultai cards in standard next format also. With Gilded Goose and Oko and others. If I lead with Temple of Mystery, we're not going to be able to have turn three Chupacabra. If I lead with Drowned Catacomb, we could have turn three Chupacabra. Which could be important. Yeah, my sound settings are messed up. There's a Windows update. So I need to make a command for because people are just going to keep on entering and asking questions about it. Choop. Gotta choop the champion. <laughs> Goose of Paradise. Whoops, I forgot to do the add command thing. There we go. Mirror, mirror, image on the wall. The, like okay, so like I could just mirror image the tube, kill a forest, and attack the Nissa for two. But where am I really going there? I think it's probably better just to get this Cavalier of Thorns in play. Completely whiff, unfortunately, and mirror image Cavalier of Thorns, likely. Maybe mirror image Chupacabra next turn, depending on what they play. That was a bad Cavalier Thorns there. It's 
So this is going to be difficult to, to handle with what we got. Good news, we're, we're probably not going to be drawing mana creatures, which is good news. Got rid of three of them there, got an extra one in hand. I'm guessing my, my opponent may have like the green, like Voracious Hydra. Maybe they have that and they're deciding whether or not to play it and kill Cavalier Thorns. Yep. Let's grab Yurok. Hmm. That's a good attack. It's a really good attack. A lot of people want to attack with that Paradise Druid there, but that was a really good attack. I do kind of need a mirror image this chupacabra, but I guess I can't really. I'm going to be dead if I try that. If, if you're somebody who's going to be here in chat for a while, and if anybody... You know, whenever somebody asks about not having a music, please refer them to that. So they could have ticked up and just attacked with everything and really put a ton of pressure on me. I'd basically be dead. Okay, so we need an untapped blue source. Nissa still has the ability to ultimate this next next turn. Ugh. I have to pay two life for a blue source. <sighs> I mean, I guess. I mean, I have to. Gosh. Some bad cavaliers for us. <laughs> so they have another voracious hydra, we die. They are tapping very quickly, like they have a voracious hydra, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know what deck will be most successful today. Um, I'd say I'm more confident in the Sultai Treachery and the Grixis midrange than the other two. I'm probably the least confident in Golgari Citadel out of the four. So I would, I would probably just, you know, like, just in confidence scale, I'd have, like, Citadel fourth, Mardu third and this and Grixis one and two. Is that even a good attack for them? I don't think it is. Is it? I don't know. It's just it's just a free attack, I guess. I just stay at one. It's 
That's what happens whenever your Cavalier of Thorns just hit five spells, five spells. You're just going to draw the lands. Hmm. Do I play this card or not? I really need like a Neoform. Like Neoform would be perfect to, yeah, Neoform would be perfect. That would be the best card I could draw. Because Neoform, we can sacrifice the Cavalier, but with the Cavalier trigger, we put the Moldrotha back into the deck. And then, um, and then we grab Moldrotha, and then Moldrotha can cast the Immortal Sun from the graveyard, so they stop getting these indestructible forests. So otherwise, I'm just going to get whittled down. Hmm. I don't even know if that would really work. Uh, this game's over. No, Immortal Sun doesn't do anything against the emblem, but it stops them from making more creatures that kill, you know, like more creatures that kill me. We do have Languish in here. We do have Finality. I mean, I guess that, that I guess that was the better draw was Finality. That's true. That was a better draw. <laughs> yeah, we did we did draw really bad. All right, so Legion's End could exile, like, all those forests. You know, like, it, it exiles all the Nyssa lands. That's the best thing Legion's End does. Um, this gets this matchup gets pretty tough, though, because of Veil of Summer. Definitely gets pretty tough because of that. Ceratops blocks Vine Mare. Because, yeah, the combination of Vine Mare, Veil of Summer is tough. And, um, and the card, they, you know, they, they wrecked us with Nyssa, but both Nyssa and Vivian Arcbow Ranger, those two are really a problem. I, I haven't won this matchup. This is only the second time I've played against it, though. But I haven't, I haven't won it. Look, it feels pretty bad. Um, we do have to just go bit bigger, you know, we have to draw like our finality, um, and stuff like we have to, we have to keep this top end in. Hmm. I don't know what to cut though. All right, with that being said, I guess I don't really have room to play Ceratops because I do want to keep that top end in. Maybe we don't have room for the fourth Chupacabra, even though it can be a, a really good card. I just want those other ones. Um, this will work. Vanifar, this is this is a good matchup for Vanifar. Them not having too much removal, Vanifar uh, gets to do a whole lot for us if we could get it in play. Hey, dang, Zach. I'll keep the land. And of course, this is usually a good Cavalier Thorn matchup whenever it actually puts lands into play. There we go. This 
it does a good job of blocking. No, my mole dropped the. Yeah, Arcbo is very good with Agent of Treachery if you you know if you get up to seven mana. Definitely. Do I just let them double block and kill a Cavalier? That feels kind of weird. I uh, probably should not let them. If I would do that then then you know I'd put like the Muldratha back on top that could recast these things. Alright, well, we had like a perfect hand. Yeah, like we had a perfect hand. And we were on the play. So on the play, perfect hand. Looked good. Can we win not being on the play with probably not a perfect hand? We'll see. Maybe we will. Oh, awesome. Dang, that good job. Got to diamond with a Bant Arcbow deck. Inspired by my version there. Good job. I was thinking, I was actually thinking about that deck the other day of how wanting to put Agent of Treachery in that in that deck. Alright, well I like the speed of our hand. We'll have five mana on turn three. At the very worst, Paradise Druid will turn into a Risen Reef. At the very worst. So many shock lands. I should probably keep that. I feel like that can do something. So I am kind of walking. I am walking into Vale of Summer. If I just choop right here. Let's Risen Reef. Let's get this going. Kind of regret that now. Kind of regret that now. We'll see. Hopefully we get some more lands. Land. Yay. Yay. All right, so we're going to have a good amount of mana. We can choop a mirror image next turn.
Oh, yeah, Subhuman. Yeah, feel free to send that. Yeah, you can send a link to it. I'd like to check that out. Why is Nissa impossible to beat? Why is Nissa impossible to beat? Oh, that's really bad tapping. That's really bad auto tapping by me. I mean, I guess I need a shock anyway to get this mirror image in play. That's pretty bad auto tapping. Yep. That's not really that bad. <clears throat> so if I would have chooped, they would have had the Veil of Summer last turn, but... Of course, we didn't know we had the mirror image on top, but still... I think I should have just done that and let them let them cast the Veil of Summer last turn, because then this turn I would have had the Choop in play, and I could have Neoformed the Choop and grab like your Rock or Cavalier. So we're gonna need to find like finality. Something for this Nissa. Asian of Treachery is nice. Obviously, I can't block the Steel Leaf Champion, so if they have a Vivian, I die. And I have to do a lot of chump blocking on forests here. Too many shock lands. Just have the card that kills me. Oh, whew, okay. Wrong Vivian. The other Vivian would kill me. That one just gives them card advantage. Good attacks. Good attacks again. This will take out all of my Risen Reefs. I think that's worth it though. But as, as you saw there, that last, or like this game, and talked about how Veil of Summer can be a, a problem. And I mean, so is Nyssa. You know, so Nyssa, Veil of Summer. It's difficult to defeat. If they have a, another Veil of Summer, I'm dead. It's just how it is. All right, they did not have another Veil of Summer. So they got four attackers. I got four blockers. And we need to draw something that's not Leafkin Druid or land. We're not going to 
be able to survive this if we only have Leafkin Druids and lands because we're doing a whole lot of chump blocking. But good thing we have like basically everything in our deck are good draws. Like we have tons and tons of good draws. And there's only 24 lands in the deck to begin with, so we've gone through a lot of lands. All right. Unfortunately, the Woodland Cemetery is the only thing that can block the Steel Leaf, so it has to have to block there. And then we'll have Agent block there. So Agent's like that's the only way that doesn't like completely jump block immediately. Okay, it's not the worst draw. I mean, I could try pressuring the Vivian, but obviously they can play creatures as though they had Flash. If they have, like, another Steel Leaf champion that just comes down and eats the Temple of Mystery, it's just a nightmare. Like, the game ends on the spot if I attack and they have a Steel Leaf. But if I attack, I mean, if they just have a Steel Leaf anyway, I'm pretty close to dead either way. But trading Temple and Forest isn't, isn't even the best trade for me. I'd rather... Try to trade like Temple with Vine Mare or something. No, definitely no ultimate. We need a blocker. We can't we can't ultimate. We need we need blockers. Ah. Uh, yeah, you didn't see that was at one. Gotcha. Yeah, no, we need. So I either, I either trade Steel Leaf and Yurok and Temple and Vine Mare. Like, I can make trades, but then my Yurok is gone, of course. And then I go to four. Or I can just double chomp and keep Yurok. So, like, those are my two options. I think it's probably better just to trade... Yeah, I think we just trade. Instead of just losing both of our other creatures for nothing. It's not a good draw. Can I afford to ultimate? Again, they could have a Steel Leaf champion, and I, if they have a Steel Leaf champion, I lose.
I guess I'm not really getting that many lands out of my deck if I ultimate. I get... I get four plus how many fours do we have in here? Two? Yeah. So I get six lands out of my deck. I'll try it. Hey, good brother. I guess it's just only five. I guess there was... Oh, right, right, right. I just played that other breeding pool. Yeah, so five. Hopefully we're not dead. Thanks so much for that resub. No, we're dead. Dang it. I guess I had to tick up. Guess I had to tick up. Does the notification show up here on the screen? Darn it. I don't know. Was that really that risky? I mean, they had, you know, like Steel Leaf Champion killed me. Like, look at where we're at. We're at four. We just don't take any risks. We're probably going to just get ran over. I don't know. It was a risk, but I don't regret it. There wasn't a notification there either. Whoops, wrong side. I don't. I don't regret ultimating there. <clears throat> They didn't play Steel Leaf Champion the turn before, and Steel Leaf Champion would have been like Steel Leaf Champion would have been a lot better than Vine Mare the turn before, and they they didn't play it. So they so I presume that they didn't have it the turn before, so that you know it would have had to been Steel Leaf Champion there that turn. Like, unless they just played in an an inferior card with Vine Mare and kept a better card in their hand, which would have made me block a lot worse with Steel Leaf Champion, which doesn't really make sense because of how it would have forced, like how good Steel Leaf is against Nissa and how bad Vine Mare is against Nissa. So, assuming they just found Steel Leaf that turn. But, oh well. Lots of combo, combo and aggro. Face two combo, two aggro. We beat the other combo after sideboarding. We've lost to the two aggros though so far today. I don't have a good anti-combo hand i mean my game one my game one just isn't really anti-combo in the deck yeah their hand's pretty good i'd say it's pretty ideal really have great lines here I 
That's a good card. Could be game, though. We'll have to see. <sighs> All right. I give up. So I want the Legion's End against those Excavators. Definitely want these unmoored egos. Hostage Shaker is not bad against their creatures. I definitely want Chupacabra. Definitely want Trophy. I mean, I, I like Negate, but of course Teferi is the problem with Negate. Um, yeah, like this is really like a six and seven mana card, but they don't play a whole lot of instant speed stuff. So you know, if we get to six and seven mana, we can take a creature and replay it. Um, I don't want find, but we, we're already playing agent of treacheries though. It's probably the way to go there. So let's see. Man, Vanifar looked so bad against Teferi. I guess I, does that mean I just can't play it, I guess? Just so bad there. Hmm. I'm gonna take out mirror image, a leafkin, and these last two cards. Just gonna play two legions ends. Are you kidding me? I had more time. Why does nothing work today? This is so frustrating. This is so frustrating. <sighs> Keeping this hand because of our two Temple of Mysteries should hopefully find us some like mana, like a two mana creature. <sighs> One of our seven two mana creatures, then we neoform that into Risen Reef, and then we neoform that into Chupacabra. We'll just start with Resin Reef. I love Chupacabra, but we don't have double black. I think I still keep it, though, because it's just so strong. But obviously, we need another black source. Hoping uh, to find that with the help of Risen Reef here. All right, come on, Black Mana. I would like to play Chupacabra and start neoforming Chupacabra. That's what I would like to do. I guess we don't get to, though. It's 
It's really unfortunate. If I kill D Diligent Excavator, they can pay two mana and turn Lazav into D Diligent Excavator. But I guess that does make them spend two mana to do that. All right, Cavalier, hopefully we'll find black mana for us. We'll also, oh, come on, there's no black mana in here. So it would also put stuff into my graveyard for find finality. Blech. All right, so if we look at another five cards, can we find black mana? Maybe. Yay, black mana. All right, now they can't uh, Urza's Ruinous Blast because the, the legendary Lazav is out here. And they chump blocked with the other creature. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that Opt was reprinted. I think that's a good reprint. I like that one. Um, so I have 13 at damage. Not lethal. Looking good. <clears throat> they could just play two mana, you know, they could play like two mana legend, um, Mox Amber. Like, uh, yeah, they could have Fibble Thip, Land Drop, Mox Amber, Urza's Ruinous Blast, and exile all my stuff. That'd be the worst case scenario. I would not like to see that. All right, so they have Kethis. I don't think they had a Mox Amber, did they? No, no Mox Amber. But they could just go Fibble Thip again. So I need to draw a land. Well, I guess I don't even need to draw a land. So I can just go Choop, Duplicate Choop, 
duplicate and get double cheap that way. They may have Assassin's Trophy to keep themselves alive. Let's target our summoning sick chup chupacabra. Assassin's Trophy doesn't keep them alive, actually. Yeah, there's there's nothing they can trophy to keep themselves alive because they they trophy that's that I'm targeting. That's still lethal. Yeah, they're just dead. Oh, definitely Lord Draxus. Yeah, definitely hyped for Throne of Eldraine. Absolutely. GG's. All right, so it looks like maybe I don't need a sideboard. I didn't get to sideboard. The deck played pretty well. Cavalier of Thorns was really important. Even Find Finality was really good. I was trying to take out Find Finality. Maybe I don't actually need a sideboard. Because, like, I unmoored Ego Kethys. You could still grind me down with Planeswalkers, right? What if I just don't sideboard? Mm, nah, I should probably sideboard. Choops were really good. Hostage Taker is probably really good. All right, so Vanifar slow. Um... Oh, I kind of like Mirror Image and Spark Double. All right, trimming a Yurok, the Life Link not mattering. All right, duplicates out. A Leafkin out, and the mirror image or the spark double? We'll go the spark double. Okay. We got our sideboard again this time. Arena's being really slow. All right, hope we get this. Hope we get go two two. Poor little woodland cemetery. Look at how small the the name is. It's just this little land over here. It's all by itself with a small name. Well, it's gonna work if we draw land. Starting to work. Come on, there you go. Come on, hit a land. Land, darn. I wanted to hit a land so we could Cavalier next turn. <clears throat> Yeah, they keep on just holding this green mana up. I mean, I think on Mordigo, I mean, I think the reason why they went overgrown tomb before Temple of Malady, 
Well, I guess that doesn't really matter which one they go first there. But I mean, I, I do think, like, you know, I think this is a prime Veil of Summer target that just takes my entire turn and is a huge bummer taking my entire turn like that. Oh, are you kidding me? Wow, I'm bad. Ugh, I'm bad. I just I was talking about why I didn't want to play Unmoored Ego and I didn't pay attention to making sure I my plan was to play Paradise Druid Neoform it into another Risen Reef and get two Risen Reefs in play. That was my plan. The plan didn't work. All right. Um, I probably should not let them have Tamiyo. So I either take all the Kethises, but then if I do that, then they get back Vial Offering, which gives them Golgari Queen. That's a huge mess. I don't really want. I don't really want that to happen. Then I have to like try to worry about getting rid of all that stuff. That's just a huge mess. Looks like someone's going to be taken hostage here. Good. Get Golgari Queen out of here. Really just want the Mox Amber. So we can name Kethis. All right, what else they got? Ruinous Blast. I don't know, Teshar. I don't know, they got some cards. Get the Lazav in play. Should 
Should have probably just kept the land on top, honestly. We're going to have Risen Reef, the Multifarious. Too many spells. Too many spells. Too much cool stuff to do. Too much cool stuff. Yeah, this is value right here. This is value. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is just this is just too much. I can't I don't even want to play like these elementals because we draw too many cards. Okay. Opponent scooped him up. Alright, so we went 2-0 against the combo decks. Unmore Unmored Ego helped out, but I mean like that time, that match. Uh it's not like we didn't really do anything with yeah, you know, like we we did get to Unmoored Ego, but we we're already pretty far ahead. <laughs> that was Value Town right there. <laughs> you check Webster's dictionary for value, this deck shows up. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, that's Soul Treachery. You got some good matches there. Lost some close ones to the aggro decks. You know, we stumbled a little bit. And that will happen. You know, other times we don't stumble and, you know, win those those kind of matchups. But, yeah, so we went 2-2. Two, two. Beat 2 combo, lost to 2 aggro. Um, you know, ag like, aggro can be tough when you stumble, but it's not it's not always that tough. I do think the mono green one, the mono green aggro deck is harder than, than other ones. Um, I've, had, I've been having a lot of success against vampires with this deck recently off stream. Uh, like, playing this yesterday, I, I was 3-0 against vampires. So it's not like... It's not like we can't beat aggro decks, but uh, you know, like the red deck just had really good hands with tons of burn. That's just going to happen. And then the green deck is a little more difficult with um, Nissa and Steel Leaf Champion and all that kind of stuff. But whenever it's backed up by a whole bunch of Veil of Summers, because that deck has just like four Veil of Summer sideboard, it makes our life more difficult. Um, but that's Soul Tide Treachery. So pretty fun deck to play. All right, so if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And um, also, like I was saying, depending on how long it takes me to figure out all of the uh, sound problems um, tomorrow, if I have time, I'll be making a video with the uh, with a sideboard guide here and what I do against uh, some of the popular decks, like what I, like how I sideboard against vampires and, and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Make sure to check out all the other videos today. Also, you know, leave comments, hit the like, subscribe buttons, all that kind of stuff. But thanks for watching Soul Tide Treachery, and I'll see you for the next video.